So uh, last year I worked with a few of the students and we did some uh, some stuff with them like blogging and uh, yeah, started to get into a bit of buzz. I've got 15 students at the moment, which is a pretty small class for me, but that's alright. And I teach boat building um, at level 4. That's mainly what I teach. And how was I doing it before? What I'm doing now? Um, it's, it's a practical course, so it's up front. It's with the student. It's alongside them. Most of them haven't experienced boat building, so yeah, we learned, and they learned as we went along. But we sort of worked through CDs of all the information on student share drive with books, and as you can see, with computers in a computer lab. Um, yeah, that's what we used to do. And the students used to log everything down in what's called a log book. Most of the assessment, we asked them to make a portfolio and put everything they learned into the portfolio. There's a few photos, some um, a lot of CAD work, uh, mainly AutoCAD, um, and then like in Word, yeah. Yep. Some spreadsheets. And a lot of the portfolio was like lofting on the loft floor sort of thing. One of the very first courses we do, one of the learning outcomes is how to work as part of a team. So they're working in a team, but yeah, a lot of the portfolios were individual, but they had in them team work. So they presented individually, but as part of a team. Yeah, so what's different now? What's changed? Um, yeah, probably me more than anything, I'm more now towards student-centred learning rather than before teacher-centred teaching. So once you've made that switch in your head and try not to switch back, which is really easy to do. Yeah, take more personal responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So they're responsible for the quality and the quantity of the output. Yeah, and themselves and other people which is really neat because it fits into the level 4 descriptor which the program is running under. Yeah. So that's good. Um, and, you know, I ask myself sometimes, why do I change like that? Well, that's what the students want. That's what they come here for. They don't come here for me. They come here for them, for their learning, yeah, for their own personal growth. It's not for me. I've already done that and still doing it. I think they ask a lot more questions and they help me right now with this stuff. And the stuff they're working on, they can see and you can see what they're talking about because it's electronic. In the past, it, it's been like conceptual in their brain, so they've had to sketch so, stuff down. For most of them it is. Yes. There's still a lot of the students that are like introvert and they haven't yet gained the confidence to talk in the right sort of language that confident vocal is talking, but that's why they're coming here to do yeah. the course get that experience and confidence and through their blogs, their personal reflection on their blogs, that's coming out more and more. Yeah, and in the past, when students have done stuff, they haven't had like, you know, um, video cameras in their phones, they haven't been able to take shots of themselves and record it, it's been like the written word, which is pretty, you know, old and not alive, whereas the videos are alive. It's them here making the mistakes. All the time. Yeah. Now what happens is working in teams, why don't we take in the video of two or three of them doing the work? So yeah. they talk about it before, what they want, and work away on it. Very rarely they take a video when, it, when it's just happening. They try to think about it before they do it. And they turn up with some real good unedited videos, which they put in their blogs, and then they reflect on that, and yeah, and they share that, stick it up to YouTube. Yep. So they open up a YouTube account, and they stick their own videos up on YouTube, and then insert them into their blogs, yeah, where necessary. And they share that, so there's a lot of collaboration going on. So we're not going to have the same video made ten. We might have ten individual videos 
up there on YouTube, but shared. Because one person will look at it and pick up something different. Yeah, we did exactly the same, but we made an error. And then they might talk about that and insert another bit of a video clip or some pictures of their own. No, no, there'd be my videos that I'd do showing them how to do stuff, which is really exciting for me, but boring for them. When I look at it now, it's like, why would you watch a video of someone else doing it when that's what you're paid to come here to do, to actually practice that yourself? And then now with that video, they can take it and show employers, this is me doing this, you can see. Yeah. Which is good. And, you know, the cameras... Most of them have on their phone. I supply a camera. I've got one here in my bag. And some of them use it all the time, but most of them take out their you know, iPhone 4s and away they go. This hasn't got a camera in it. Before, I haven't been able to see what they've been thinking about. Now I can watch their videos and look at their reflections and their comments on it. And then I can see where they're coming from. So now I can make comment about that. Yeah, before it was like I imagined they picked up yeah. what we were talking about and they had it in their brain. Now I know that they've got that and what level they're at and where they might need help. It's a combination of things like students are social animals, well we all are, and these sort of mediums make them more social, yeah. Yeah, more collaborative. Stuff can happen because they've got that stuff. In the past it was never captured. It wasn't real, it wasn't live. It was only in the here and now which is hard to capture because you can tell a story which brings that back, but there's not a lot of people that are storytellers. Yeah, there's lots of Web2 tools. Like I use AutoCAD a lot, and uh, that's really good, but you need to have it on a, um, on a computer. But now like there's um, AutoCAD WS, which is in the cloud. So that's opened up a whole lot of different collaborative um, potential now that we never used to have before. So a lot of these Web2 tools have yeah, changed um, learning, yeah, changed teaching. It's, yeah, and, well that's in the planning stage. It's like sitting down and talking every day and uh, telling them in advance that my expectations are that your portfolio will contain like a blog of your reflections every week on what you've done. So I've organised tasks, and we've spoken about tasks in the whole of making a boat, and each student gets a main task, and then they blog about that, and then they share and collaborate and discuss about that amongst themselves. But the end result is they do that on a blog, which is quite good. They buzz as well, which I'm really getting into. Yeah, starting. Yeah. And the students sometimes have tools that I haven't even thought about. It's like, what's that? It's spreading. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's large, you know, like you go on to the web and you look under Web2 tools, you know, R Us, and it's like, there's millions of them. So there's actually Web2 tools that combine all the Web2 tools and give a description of what they are and categorise them. It's like tag them. Yeah. So there's a whole new um, language that you need to learn because the students are using it all the time and you need to learn to listen to what they say. Yeah, probably brainstorm them to start with and I might use a Web2 tool to brainstorm, mind map, um, because there's really no list and I'm a technical person, I'm used to listing things, but there's the Web2 tools and how I use them, it's so broad that at the moment I can't list them individually other than say that I'm going to use this and that to do it with. I know one thing that I've learned is if they're free, that's good. And if they're easy to use, that's good. And if they help in learning, that's good. And if they all tie together and talk to each other, that's good. Differently than what I did in the past, I'm making them more um, responsible for the assessment events and giving them feedback as they go along on that. In the past, it was like almost like an exam at the end, too late. They need to, because they're constructivists, they're constructing their knowledge, and they need to know as they go along with feedback what that's all about. So the A students will always be A students, and they want to do what they do really well, and the B students 
want to become A students, most of them, and the same with the C students. They're at different levels. They are where they are, and this, these sort of tools allow them to be there and get further. That's, that's one of the things. They can get there quicker than what they used to before. Yeah, I sort of started to look at rubrics and I, um, yeah, criterion reference. So if you did a, um, did this, you got a zero, and you did this, say you got ten. And if you did this, you got between four and six. So, but that was pretty boring. And I'm thinking, you know, the students read that, they know what to do, and it's like, you know, where's the creativity in there? Where's the individual stuff? So now what I'm trying to come up with is, I don't know if it's right, but I think it, it must be right because I know it's right is I'm trying to come up with a conversational rubric. So in my head, I go through a conversation that I start with, but I don't finish it. And that is the lead to help the students get into the conversation. And when they know the whole conversation, I know and they know that they know all the stuff. I start off the marking grid, like, yeah. how do you think you'd go about solving this problem when this happens? And that carries on. And that's what makes the conversational rubric. So it's quite a big conversation and it's very complex. Yeah. It's quality control, so telling them when they've done right, telling them when they've done wrong, what right is. Because the A students, their right is different than what the C students are, because their understanding is different. But then when they collaboratively work, so the A student can see what the C student's doing, and a lot of the time they help them and aid them to get there better than I ever can, most of the time. times of the tools I model them so I, I actually go and try them I like blog and I put it up there and I stick it up there and they can see it I don't want to end up with a whole lot of mirror images of me because they laugh about is that all you can do you know that's not a very good look there's a better way and it's like yeah so I become the learner again and learn with them and that happens a lot yeah. I'm not saying that I'm I'm really smart at using this high-tech stuff or not too smart but I'm learning a lot by changing that and becoming student-centred focused rather than teacher-centred focused. So, yeah, I think I'm learning a hell of a lot quicker than what I would if I kept doing what I used to do. One of them come to me the other day and he says, I'm not really blogging as well as what I expect. Can I come back and, yep, so we're having a meeting next week to do more on that. Now, I know he can do it well, but I wonder what made him say that. Maybe he thinks he's at a B and he can do better because he's seen other people's. So that's good, that's ownership. It's exciting, it's alive, it's, it's them, it's theirs. In the past we've given them workbooks and it's all ours and it's boring stuff. This is theirs and they're putting a lot more into it. A lot more energy, a lot more emotion. Yeah, and ownership, they own it. So they're going out of here with pride in what they do and confidence. So when they're talking to someone, it's like, I know this because I made it, rather than this is what we had to do with the course and this is my final grade. It's like, I don't think actually they're too interested in the grades anymore. It's more into this is my stuff. Yeah. In other words, it's a portfolio. This is how good I am. And you can see in that, which is cool. And they can share that. They can share it with their mum, their employer, with whoever they want. You need to get the infrastructure right. You need to spend a, invest a lot of time in arthing the staff and the students. And uh, so the infrastructure, like the main buildings are still all right, but it's what's in them. There is the big change. And uh, yeah, you need to get more max. Um, that's a big thing. Because that increases productivity, not only from me, but to the students as well. So... Um, yeah, and we really don't need computer labs like this anymore. It's a thing of the past, even though I teach in them. It's, yeah, we need to have more individual laptops and uh, like you know stuff you hold in your hand so when you're working or your phone, you can do it and record it there and then. That's exciting.